All right. Yeah. Told- hey, everybody, it is time to have us all together again. Anya's and Dan Radio Style. Now, personally for me, Anya's Fivarelli, just that one day, that one day a month I typically get. It's just like heaven in a bottle, right? If I could spray that all over myself every day, I'm telling you the love that I would feel at all times. But we've got an additional person, someone that's been very involved with our <laughs> past this whole success story and things that she's got it was amazing a lot of great things have come and on top of that we've got three certified organic nuts here to talk with you Jacqueline give us some information about yourself what's going on what's happening hi so um I should say that first, shouldn't I? <laughs> um major fangirl moment again like I I'm this is amazing for me I never um, actually, I kind of hoped for this maybe about a year ago, and I thought, well, that would be really awesome if I could ever talk to both of you, and it's happening, so yay. <laughs> um, I have um, uh, shifted my focus, like my, my person and I are doing wonderful. Um, we, I still work on myself daily. I still work on self-love all the time, and you know, I notice when I'm getting off track because then that's always the time I don't want to meditate. I don't want to you know, focus, and it's almost like my ego is throwing a fit. Um, that's kind of something I've, I've noticed where it's like, I don't want to meditate. No, I don't. Cause that's what I need to do to fix it. And I don't want to do it. And so I still, even, you know, a year later, I still have things that I have to work through and, um, it gets better all the time, but you're constantly learning and you're constantly growing and it's evolving. And so now I'm applying it to other parts of my life. I agree. I think that's one of the larger challenges that so many of us face is we think there's some cutoff point, like where you're done with this law of attraction. I'm done learning about law of attraction. I know it completely top to bottom. I've been to the end of the internet and I've seen every page. You know, it's like, it's that kind of thinking. And it's like, no, forever. It just keeps going and we get better and better. And I I think uh, it's just part of the process. So I think when we forget that or when we're trying to learn law of attraction, in absence of that knowledge like this i'm gonna keep working on this i'm gonna get better and better every single day 30 years from now i'm still gonna be getting better i think anya you've talked about this great quote that and that you were actually where i heard it first so i think it was lewis hay saying something along those lines i just wonder if you would what help was me the, fill in the, brain. the quote about uh how good she was at the end of her uh her oh. Ah, yeah, she was still doing about 70% when she was 70%. Her, she said her was hey? 70%. She was starting to really, really. I, and that's, I think, what's kind of the powerful thing about it is, is with practice, as we get better, as we work down those, those avenues, uh, the belief that comes into play, like all these things. And it's really cool. So yeah. I'm glad you kind of shared that. You have uh, some website stuff I th- or podcast or something you started. What's up with that? Here's a decent place to plug that. Um, yeah, so I actually started um, a small podcast. It was really just wanting um, – I've kind of been doing it anonymously, um, and I share it with a few people that um, have emailed me. And it's really just, you know, talking about your beliefs and how to work through things. And there's been a couple times where I've mentioned you two where you have had a topic on your show – and I've talked about how I got through that and where I am now and how you work through your issues. Um, so I have like three different episodes and I, um, I kind of post segments under those. Uh, one is like beliefs uh, and then another, the longest one is self-love and then just some other random, uh, random things. And I, I don't of talk about a lot. Of- <laughs> we, have links below. We, we, we have links below too. I just want to remind everyone that yeah. uh, Jacqueline's links are below. Sorry, keep going. Oh, no, you're fine. And I also have an email address um, because a lot of people have been contacting me like personally through Facebook and I'm like, um, I appreciate it, but I'm also really not okay with that at this point just because it is my personal um, life and um, there's a lot that I want to keep private. And so uh, I have an email address. If somebody does want to reach out to me, I don't mind. It's just, I keep that. Facebook is just for me and my family and my friends and um, so I've kind of developed new ways for people to reach out. Like I was, fi- people were finding me in really random places and I like even on LinkedIn, yep. like for, for professional, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, how are you guys finding me here? Well, um, Felder, here's a good example to get into something I think that makes a great topic is when certain things start popping into our worlds, right? Like certain behaviors, certain experiences that we don't like that we'd like to change, right? Cause it's part of certainly from the, I mean, Anya and I have had talks about this before as you grow as a creator in YouTube, for example, you start getting a lot more comments, more emails, a lot more experiences like that. So when you start noticing as your success increases, maybe you're getting more important at your job and you're making more money, right? Like your, your 
expanding your life and now all of a sudden you've got to deal with new problems. How do you manifest a better reality from this improved place, right? Because it's cool that you're getting all these people asking you questions, right? So, uh, you know, Anya, what are some of the things you try to do when it comes to improving uh, the situation you're at, looking out ahead, trying to expand even further? Like what's, what's your next, you know, year and a half plan, five-year plan? How do you help shift things when you notice there's a behavior that's difficult? How do we, how do we cope with the, those things in our life? Good question. I think it really is for me going back to firstly, I say no to a lot of stuff. I used to say yes to everything. Now I'm really pinpointed focused on what I'm doing and I eliminate what I really don't want to do. So I've got this much energy every day and I go, okay, I'm going to do YouTubes. I'm going to do my coaching. I'm going to do my email coaching. I'm going to make sure that I do my own affirmations, my exercise. I get eight hours sleep. I do my meditations twice a day for an hour. And then I look at what's left and I really, I've really simplified things. And I think too, when I'm in London, I've made it a point to not make friends here. I have one friend that I see and another person that I know from a Neville group that we talk Neville, but I have no other friends here and I've kept it that way on purpose so that I work and then I do my own looking after myself. And that is really, really, really important for me because I used to say yes to everything and I used to say yes to everybody and then my energy would go whoosh and then there'd be nothing left. And that's one of the challenges I think about this whole process uh, is how we frequently utilize energy to help friends of ours. Like a lot of us out there, you have that friend, right? That keeps asking you those questions, keeps asking you every single day. What about this? What about that? Hey, yeah. what well, can we hang out? Can we talk? And yeah. it starts to become like you call, I think an energy vampire, but certainly anything yeah. that drains your energy. Yeah. Uh, and those things can be dangerous and damaging. So okay. I was curious, um, hey, Jacqueline, what do you do when that kind of tends to happen? Um, I take a step back and, um, you know, sometimes, you know, if someone I can tell if they're emailing me out of like their own anxiety, or their own panic and, you know, several emails in a row, I take a break. I kind of like, okay, well, I'll wait till you're kind of chilled out. And then I'm not in a state of like frustration from it. And then I reply, you know, um, when I'm, I can review everything they've said and then I, and I'm like, well, okay, so this is where we're going to be. I can tell you panicked. So, you know, in that time, like it's not going to elicit a response from me because you're panicking and you're emailing me a lot. And it's, it's more out of not teaching a lesson, but kindness being, I'm not going to feed your anxiety. I'm not going to feed into that because it's going to stress me out for one. And two, we've got to approach it from a place where you've calmed down and I've calmed down. And I just don't want to do that to myself. And especially like if I'm at work and I've gotten, you know, a lot of emails and what's hard is when, you know, people, they want help so bad and you can tell, Mm. but they're not willing to do the work and they want a different answer from me than what they're going to get from you or Dan. Um, And I'm just like, no, it's yeah. the same response for me. It's self-love. No matter what, it is self-love all the time, whether yeah. it's money or your job or your family, you know, and it's believing you're a priority and putting yourself first and that neediness, whether it's me or your job or your friends, like we can mm-hmm. feel the neediness when people are just like, like just machine gunning you with emails and, you know, some people do it and then they're, they realize, you know, like, um, it's just hard. I'm sorry. You know, I kind of got caught up in a moment and they know they're doing it. And then other times like people just keep doing it and then they start to get mad because you're not, you're not answering them. And those people, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't help you if you're not, you know, like you're not in the right place right now. Like this is not even healthy for me to try to help you. That brings up a great point with the whole trying to get your energy to a good place. Sometimes we hit things from an emotional level and you've got it all typed up and you're all fired up. You're like, right. And then all of a sudden it's crazy (laughs) what you've got written out. And before you hit send, you need to take a second and go, Whoa, chill. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. Bring it back a second. Let's think about this before we say like, there should be a, like a, like an unsend uh, within 10 seconds where you're like, Oh my God, no. Oh geez. Oh Lord. Because I almost just said (laughs) something crazy. Yeah, exactly. So there's been plenty of times where I've even started doing that, even commenting on videos. Sometimes it's like, and then I'm like, yeah, you just got to get your energy back in line because it, 
can be, you know, when you get involved with friends and family, sometimes you can get those emotional charges that uh, yeah. we have to bring down a notch, I think, before we uh, respond. I don't know what you think about that, Anya. Well, I have um, a basic sort of thing that I do that when I'm with friends, I've logged off. I've taken the coach hat off. I've taken the help hat off. And if someone needs, one of my friends needs to talk about something, that's fine. And I just listen. And then I say, you know what? You're smart. You'll work it out. I'm telling you, you don't wear that hat very often, apparently, because you've got no hat head right now. I don't know. Jacqueline, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong, but I see no hat head. No hat head. <laughs> uh, serious, thank you. That's two against one on you. So what's well, up with this hat? Well, the thing is, you know, once you start doing this sort of work, I mean, do you want to be on eight hours a day plus no. then doing it after hours? I personally don't because I know I need my energy to be totally focused on giving to the people that have requested my services, have paid for the services, and they have the right to have uh, someone who's alert, someone who hasn't drained their energy, and someone who's on top of it. So I try and say, okay, I've got that much energy a day. I only personally deal with three people a day face-to-face -face because when I've done four, it's put me in bed and I've been exhausted. Can't so see me. I this doesn't count. This doesn't count. You can't see me. <laughs> So I know my limits, you know, everybody's got different limits, but I know when I'm doing, okay, I've got, I've got three people face to face a day. That's my limit to really give properly and totally with focus to those people. The rest I do email coaching during the day. Then I have to do YouTube. Then I've got two or three people that subcontract to me. I've got to keep them busy. So I go, okay, that's my seven hours a day. I try not to do more than seven, sometimes eight. And then I go, okay, I have two days off a week. So I really make sure that I keep things out. And the thing that's come to me over and over again, being the eldest child in the family, is I'm there to serve other people that are below me, as in my siblings. Right. right. So I've had to let go of Robin Hood syndrome. I'm not the only answer to someone else's problem. Okay. I, ha I know I can help, but I've in the past, I've smashed myself emotionally from helping people and I've done it to my own detriment. Now being the eldest child, I know that doesn't serve me. I know that's a real tendency of mine. I've got to stop doing it and I've got to pull back and say, I will give this much and then the rest I need to recharge my battery so that I can work clearly and effectively the next day with concentration and focus. So I, I would now say, yeah. know my limits. Yeah, I would say too, kind of the same. I think we frequently have fun with the stupid phrase out here called work-life balance. Yeah. But I find I have the same kind of issue. My computer's just in the other room. Like my normal job is just right over there. And like my boss thinks I should be attached to this thing 24 seven. I'm like, no. Yeah. no. So it is that thing. And you've got to kind of have a little bit of balance. All of us mm -hmm. have to have a little bit of balance in our life between, you know, those friends that ask for a lot or job that asks for a lot or the and you kids that ask for a lot. It. You've yeah, got you to do. protect it. And you've got yeah. to make room for yourself. You have to, there yeah. has to be a little bit of time and there's always a little bit of time somewhere that you can give for yourself. Yeah. And I think it's really, really yeah. important for us to remember. Jacqueline, do you have issues? I know you work a normal job like, job like myself and I'm not saying Anya, so you're just the one we look forward to being when we finally can just do YouTubes and talk to people and kind of just live off that. So that sounds like a wonderful existence. But that being said, I'm working a job, you know, doing the YouTubes, having fun with it all. What about you, Jacqueline? What do you do to kind of keep that balance? I mean, I have, you know, um, an eight to five job Monday through Friday and, um, it's very, uh, very intense. I have about 70 clients that I process payroll for. And so, um, I've got, you know, about 2000 people a month that I'm processing payroll for on a regular basis. And I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot of, um, customer service. It's a lot of talking to people. And so, you know, um, you know, with a lot of phone calls during the day, plus we have live chat on our website that we talk to our clients through that way and the employees. And I mean, it just gets, it gets to be overwhelming sometimes. And like, I will come home and I will literally get here, take my dog outside to my apartment. And like, I will sit in my chair, not in the dark, because that's creepy, but like, they're like, like just, all the people across the street. It's like, yeah, I'm looking at you. Yeah. No, but like, um, like my, like it'll still be light outside, but there'll be like, just, I won't turn on lights. I won't turn on my computer. I'll sit my phone down and I'll just sit and I'll just kind of breathe for a minute and think, Oh my gosh, I'm home. I don't have to talk to anybody right now. Like I've just got to talk to my dog and my cat. Like I'm okay for a little bit, you know, and like, I just, I just take time to be, to be alone 
and yeah. to turn out off the outside world. Like I won't even turn on TV. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've come home and I've ended up emailing or messaging friends or something like that, but not actually talking. And I've sat for almost an hour and a half or two hours and I haven't even realized where did the time go? I didn't eat dinner. I didn't go for a run yet. I don't know what I'm doing with my life right now. I just needed to decompress and I make sure that I shut off. And even if I have emails, it may take me, you know, a day. Like I, I may respond the next day, depending on how exhausted and drained I am. And it's not out of rudeness. It's just because I literally can't take any more on yeah. my plate at that moment and I'll go to bed at an eight o'clock and tell my dog that we are going to bed early. <laughs> I like this. I like this really solid communication thing you got going on with your dog. It's like, no, seriously, Abby, I'm going to be going to uh, the store. I'll be back. It's cool. I do. I talked to her. I used I, to do it too. I, I get it. I, get it. Um, I, knew, I, I knew she Abby. had no concept of time though. It's like it's soon. Like, I don't even know what that means to it. The dog's like, that's forever to me. Like you don't even know. Yeah. Um, you walk outside funny. and they forget who you are. They're like, oh my God, you're back. You're like, I just literally walked out and came right back. There was no. Sometimes I take her with me though. She's a, she's a uh, trooper. She likes, um, we go hiking and running and um, her, uh, her brother, which is um, my person's uh, dog. They are like, they're insane because he's a year and a half old and she's eight months old. And so they play non-stop and they run non-stop and I'm like you guys just go get your energy out <laughs> you just do your own thing I don't have to entertain you right now you just uh, go play together <laughs> well Anya you have a you have one of those emotional support giant kangaroos right don't uh, don't you have one of those that just comes around with you? yeah okay, of course people I'm about to uh, <laughs> uh revisit that animal when I get back to Australia on the 2nd uh, of September oh you're going back soon <laughs> I am nice to the land where everything the can land. kill you yeah. Everything. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> every insect, every animal, everything yeah. is deadly. It's deadly. Yeah. yeah. Tune in. Live you, safari. Yeah. You know, my, I, mom I do a bad my mom lives in the mountains, and that's where all the nasty things are. Oh, well, there's, yeah. yeah. yeah you've told me some stories about some of the crazy spiders, and I'm, yeah. I want to go there really bad, but I, I feel like I'd be walking around with a giant net around me, right? Like, probably have to be chained down because of crocodiles. Kind of Fears about insects, it's not the country to go to. No. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. insects that can kill me or pick me up and fly away with me. Yeah. yeah. I have a concern about these sorts of things. Yeah. I, mean, I don't yeah. know who wouldn't. Uh, yeah. You just live there all the time. I don't know if you guys have an alarm or a warning. You hear their, that noise. And you're like, oh, here comes that. No. You just <laughs> look, honestly, when I first got there 30, I think 33 years ago, when I first immigrated there, I. You know, I was living in Sydney and I remember thinking, okay, you know, I'm in the city, what's going to happen here? And I remember this blue tongue lizard and he was literally Whoa. that long. I was in the city and I was going to school and he started running and I was running, but he was running, he was scared. So he was running towards me, but he was trying to get away from me at the same time. I could tell. And not very good at it, apparently, because you don't run towards the thing you're trying to get away from. Yeah, and the, tongue, <laughs> like, the blue tongue lizard tongue is about that long. So when he sticks it out, it's literally blue. And it's, I would just got there from Canada. I was thinking, what the heck yeah. is this? Canadian people I know don't have these blue tongues. That's crazy. What blue is this foreign lizard. animal so, yeah. running at you, you trying to get away from you? Still my favorite country in the whole world is Australia, nice. even though I move around. around. I love that country. It's, there's lots of space. There's lots of acceptance. There's lots of beautiful beaches, beautiful spaces. It is still my heart and my home is still Australia. That reminds me of something kind of, I think all three of us should speak on. And that's kind of what, uh, what brought us into law of attraction or spirituality or whatever your thing is that you've kind of gone down this path. Like, was there a moment where it just kind of aha you and you're like, Oh, wow, I got to do this. Uh, I think for me, it was when my grandfather passed and I experienced yeah. him and I was awake and I wasn't on drugs or anything crazy like that and had a very weird physical experience where I could see him and he touched. It was just crazy. Like people could say whatever they want. It's okay. It was an experience I had, but it changed my life. And I think forever mm -hmm. from that point, I looked at everything very, very differently. So for me, and that was kind of, I think what started it for me. Uh, what about you guys? Um, Jacqueline? Well, um, I went through a um, pretty tough divorce about three years ago, and 
I had grown up in a Christian household. My dad is Catholic, my mom is Baptist, and I was raised in the Methodist church. Really random. Right. Um, different. But, you know, my, my <laughs> so I wasn't what I would call incredibly religious at the time of my divorce. And I, you know, I, I did pray like I did what I'd always been taught to do for comfort. And for me at that time, it felt like it was more of a needy approach and I didn't get the comfort and relief that you're supposed to get from praying that you're told that you're supposed to have. And I, you know, I kind of like shrugged it off for a while and I stepped away from my beliefs for quite a while. And then, um, when I met my person and all of this stuff started happening and, um, then, then we split up and I was looking, I was like, okay, I need to reevaluate my place and how I feel about religion and spirituality and my connection to the world around me because everything I've done before now has not worked. It's mm -hmm. not working. So I need to do something better that feels good to me. And that's when I started um, reading about like law of attraction and how your beliefs work. And I was like, okay, so this makes sense for me because I could connect it to things from my religious teaching stuff from my past. And I talked to my parents about it and I brought my family in on it. And so, you know, like we're all on this law of attraction, manifesting spiritual belief, healing from the inside out train and wow. I have you know I have my whole family on this which has really um, been impactful because once I started explaining things to them and we watched the secret together and I was like this all makes sense <laughs> um, for things you know like our lives like look at what we've done before and this is how we've gotten here and um, so now for the past year I've really stepped into more of um, just different different approach to I've, I've actually say I'm more agnostic and I'm more spiritual because I believe more in the universe and God as a whole you know like um and not just my version please people don't be offended but you know when you when you're taught growing up is that that God's sitting in a chair with a magnifying glass judging everybody and you're going to be in trouble all the time no matter what you do and and that's how it was taught to me when I was younger not necessarily by my parents but in the churches I attended and I didn't like that. It didn't feel good because I was like, you're supposed to believe that the universe and God and, and, and the whole um, world loves you and it's, a, and it's an unconditional love. How are we supposed to feel unconditional love if the, pers the entity um, is mad at us all the time? And so I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. So um, I, I did a lot of reading, a lot of Neville, um, Abraham Hicks has been very influential for me, um, Wayne Dyer, um, there's several, uh, people that I've read that I just, I feel like this feels so good and it's all about love and it's unconditional love and it comes from the inside out uh -huh. and it's not just, you do make choices and you do have the power to choose what you're doing. And yes, people are you pushed out in the sense that you start attracting that out of other people because of what's going on inside of you. And that's what I think people don't understand is my, you know, my ex-husband and I, uh, we grew up together, but we were very toxic for one another because he brought out horrible things in me that I, you know, I, I was not that person. And I brought out a very terrible side to him. And, you know, um, I recently reached a place of very powerful forgiveness for him, uh, which I never thought I would have after the way that our marriage ended. And I really just want him to be happy. Like I, and I feel it truly within my entire body. Was I that, want him to was be that happy. part of the, the whole you turning, like you kind of coming to this law of attraction moment. Was that kind of like when it all just finally locked into place was when you finally um, did that forgiveness or was it? No, that was recent. Actually, that was like a week ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, wow. um, but I was, it was mostly that I wanted something different. I wanted something that felt good. I wanted something that I felt lost because I didn't relate to very strict Christianity teachings anymore. I, d I didn't feel like it felt good. Right. Um, to try something I, different. I wanted something different that was wholesome and I could relate to and it, it would be a part of me and I could believe it right. and not just act as if I believed it. Totally. So Anya, so in your kind of crazy 
organic way. Uh, what what kind of led you down this path of, of, I don't know, tranquility and bliss? And I don't know, is it like you for me? Like wherever I walk around, it just rains glitter. Everywhere I go, it's just raining glitter all over me, constantly a party, everyone's throwing stuff. I, I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Every, so of course there's, you know, once you made that jump. No, what was your big magic moment? Uh, I think being totally smashed around work, around money, around relationships, around health, and just knowing that I had absolutely no idea in every single aspect of my life. Right. I think that was definitely the moment where I just thought, you have no idea. You actually have no idea. And admitting it to myself and then my friend that I'm still friends with and we do, you oh, know, we have, three or four friend, we have three or four phone calls a week about the law of attraction. She gave me my first book, which was Florence Scovel Shin's book of, um, it was three books in one, I think three or four. It was, had the game of life. Oh, it had okay. some other, the, your word is your wand. It had these different books. Oh and, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah I thought, yeah. I remember and those that, books. It's, it's, really it's just, they were just, and she was really strong on affirmations and she was really strong on your word is your wand. So what you say is what you speak is what you get. And I remember thinking, what, you know, like I was just so foreign to this kind of thinking. And then that same friend gave me, the book, The Law and the Promise by Neville. And that again was all stories of people that had a problem. They did certain things and they got a certain result. So I was, I remember reading that book, The Law and the Promise, and I could not sleep. I was so electrified by reading these stories because it wasn't, you're the teacher and I'm the student, you're better than me and I'm less than you. It was just ordinary people sharing ordinary stories. And I read that book and I read it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And I tried to break down the mechanics of how they applied certain things. And that to me was a turning point because I had no idea. I, I honestly, I mean, the secret came years later. Yeah, yeah. I, this was at the time it was kind of pre-internet, pre-YouTube pre anything we were going to bookshops and getting books and highlighting this was 30 they, they years actually ago. were they had paper and stuff inside of them it's crazy oh my gosh crazy. yeah paper and words it was you had paper to touch and it and turn it like remember it wasn't a swipe there was no swiping really and <laughs> no copy you go like five pages if you swiped it just flipped to like you'd be like where the hell was i where yeah. was my book but at that time, I'd had five relationships, the fifth one being my marriage, got, you know, so yeah. very similar to Jacqueline. I just, I got married. We brought up the absolute worst in each other. I had such a strong, I'm second best, I'm insecure, I'm needy, I'm thinking that you're my source of love and you're not giving it to me. Holy S and F, I don't nice. know what to do. So it ended up that I had to learn that I, my projections and my thoughts, feelings and beliefs were going out and creating certain things. And I had no concept of that at that time, 30 years ago. I, I honestly had absolutely no idea. Even though I grew up with a mum that had Louise Hay, I kind of related, related Louise Hay to health. I related Louise Hay to affirmations. So I would do that stuff for that area, but it was like all the other areas of my life, really, I wasn't applying anything to because I you, didn't get it. You bring up something really awesome. And I just thought of one of my viewers and it's a very, it's a viewer that I think speaks for a larger population of people, but it is kind of around the concept of health, right? <laughs> I feel like there's kind of a couple forks in this whole life thing, right? And like, what do we do to, is that just something you manifest to, or do you manifest time for it? Like, I'm just curious, like for me, I, it's like, I know I've been traveling a bit lately with work, so it's been hard for me to get in some sort of routine, but I kind of just recently said, screw it. When I'm home, I'm going to make sure I get down to the gym at least three days a week. Right. And I'm going to just do it and make sure it happens. Do you, do you guys worry about that at all? And you're like, nah, well, I don't care about health. I just know I'll be fine because I'm magical in my thought process which is actually probably you know good enough to some degree i don't know I'm just curious what your guys' thoughts are on the whole concept Jacqueline, of you go you go with that um so well okay for health and beliefs and things like that um i work i work in a very large company i work in a very large building and 
everybody has children um, and then they their little ones get sick they come to work and they're sick and this last like flu season everyone around me was sick with the flu strep throat like they had all these horrible things going on and every single day I, I walked into work with the affirmation of I am always healthy I am always healthy I am always healthy I am strong and um, so that became part of my, my routine in my life. Like I incorporated that into every conversation when people were talking about how sick they were and they were like, you haven't caught it yet. And I was like, Nope, I am always healthy. And I took, I took very good care of myself this whole entire winter and I made my health a priority. And I was like, I've never used affirmations for my health before, but I noticed that all the people that always talked about how sick they were all the time were the people that kept getting sick. And I was like, "Mm, I'm going to try this. So I, I incorporated it into my every part of my life like when conversations the food I ate um, I, I drank um, like immune supporting tea and I just talked about myself in a very loving way all winter long and I will say I never caught one single cold I had people sitting next to me with strep my and I sit in like cubicle area so I mean if people are sick it's rampant yeah. um, not one, not one sore throat, not one cough, sneeze, nothing. All what winter. Um, probably lots of hiccups. I do get the hiccups. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. I, just, I mean, I know they're not necessarily <laughs> contagious, but I just wanted to get a they full are. rundown. I think they're contagious. I, they All have right. to be. Okay. Um, I was just checking. I was making sure. <laughs> but really, I incorporated it into my entire life. And when I talked about myself, I talked about myself in a loving way way about my health and I used to you know I played sports all growing up into college um, basketball volleyball I, I've trained horses since I was very little I, I've, I've beaten my body up I do not feel 31 I feel my body generally I, I, I feel much older than 31 because of the sports I've played and mm. I started talking very lovingly about my body instead of being like, oh, I, I you know, I crack and pop like a box of Rice Krispies. <laughs> like, I, you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it just, it just reminds me of getting out of bed. <laughs> yes, literally. Like, the, the, and, you know, like I go to like kneel down and you hear my knee and it's like <sighs> this horrible noise. And um, I just, I started talking about myself in a very loving way. I never, ever thought about incorporating health into law of attraction and I was like but this makes sense it works for everything else we gotta talk about ourselves like we're healthy and I don't have migraines really Uh, now um I've only had one and I think it was due to allergies because it sounds like sounds like a lot of this kind of thought process and sort of changing your whole uh thinking around health is really everything like you've you've got through so that's just something uh good for people to continue or think about out there now, I know uh, in the case of Anya, so a lot of people don't know this because she doesn't typically talk about it, but she <laughs> happens to be a cage fighter. She's one of the fiercest competitors in the circuit, from what I understand. Uh, people are afraid to even mention your name in mixed circles, from what I understand, for the fear of your wrath. But uh, what else do you do for health and uh, wealth and well being? Sorry, health and well being. Sorry. Did I stretch it a hair on that, maybe? I, I don't know. Maybe you're not a cage fighter. Was that where I missed the, the boat? I'm sorry. Oh, Might have confused yeah. you with something, uh, someone else. You, t- you take things on a tangent, right? You just never know where the trains, like know. the, 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 the gonna, stations I'm back actually, there, mate. Like where the frick are you going? But yeah, I'm going to redirect this because oh. there is something that Jacqueline it. actually emailed me about about a saddle that was so astounding, oh, yes. and amazing. Would you yes. be willing to share that, Jacqueline? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, most of you guys know that I, I, have, I grew up on a very large farm. Horses have been my life um, since I was about two. I still ride. I, am, I still compete uh, every now and then. Um, so anyway, my horse now I've had for 12 years. Um, and she, like the saddle I had just wasn't really fitting her, you know, and I didn't want her to be uncomfortable while we were riding. And I mean, this is something that's very important. Like people that don't know, your saddles actually have to fit your horse because it's just like people they're made horses are made different their bodies are shaped different so you have to have stuff that fits and I had a saddle that I actually sold on eBay uh, about 10 years ago I just needed some extra cash I wasn't using it um, and and about a year ago I got on eBay and I 
I actually found the person I sold it to. Like I found her seller rate or her buyer rating on me. I emailed her and I was like, hey, do you happen to still have this saddle? And she was like, no, I sold it to a friend. I don't know if she'll want to sell it back. Never heard anything else. Um, and then I just one day I got on eBay. I thought, well, I might as well try to find it again. Just casually browsing. I searched for it and I found it. And I thought, oh my gosh, is this really mine? And it was. And I knew because it had markings on it that I had done when I had it. Mm -hmm. And very distinct, could not miss it. And I thought, oh my gosh, this would be so great if I could have it. I sent screenshots to, you know, my family. I was like, look what I found. Mm -hmm. And I just, I literally just had good memories of it because it was super comfortable to ride and compete in. And I thought, I just really wish I wouldn't have sold it. I wish I had it back. But if I don't get it back, it's fine. I'll just find another one. Not a big deal. Well, a week goes by. And I was on uh, Facebook in a buy and sell group. And there was about 30,000 people that are in this group. So that just lets you know how many people are buying and selling horse stuff in just one group. Wow. And um, I had my saddle for sale because I wanted to sell it to buy the other one back if and, and I saw that the ad had ended on eBay and all that so I posted my saddle and randomly this girl commented that she wanted to follow my ad and I thought oh I was like well I'm up for trades you know depending on what you have and she replied with a comment that was the screenshot from the eBay ad with the saddle that was actually mine from 10 oh, years boy. ago that's that awesome. is small world, right? Blowingly incredible. Yeah, and I thought this is a joke. What just happened? I literally couldn't. I couldn't even function for a second to reply because I couldn't believe what had just happened. And I said, "Are you serious? Like, really? That's what you have for trade?" And she's like, "Yeah, I tried to sell it, you know, on eBay, and I didn't get anybody to buy it." And um, I, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. And I was like, "Yes, I will trade you. Yes." And so she sent me more photos. And it was. It was my exact saddle from 10 years ago. And it was a saddle I'd seen on eBay. And I didn't comment on the ad on eBay because I was there. I didn't follow it. There's no way she could have traced me to Facebook. There's no way she could have linked that. And out of all of the ads and photos on Facebook in this group, she found my saddle, commented on mine. Wow. And we made the switch. Um, and I kept telling myself, I'm going to get this for free. I'm going to get this for free. Um, all we did was pay for each other's shipping uh, wow. to send my saddle to Ohio and her saddle here. And um, my parents that day um, gave me a gift of cash just because they were like, here, we want to you know, buy your groceries and stuff like that. And that actually ended up paying for my cost to ship my saddle to Ohio. So I did get it completely for free. <laughs> Wow. wow. By the way, that people? reminds me really quickly of one thing. I'm sorry, I just had to interject this because I think it's yeah. a cool thing for people out in the audience to remember is the lady that was trying to sell the saddle on eBay, your saddle, right? She was trying to sell it on mm -hmm. eBay. So from a law of attractive perspective, some of us out there trying to do things and she tried to sell it and she failed, right? She failed, never sold it on eBay, but there was immediately a different way. And sometimes I think we get so stuck on specific yep. paths that yes. we forget that the universe oh can gosh, provide yes. things in any number of directions. Um, absolutely. Like that is, that is so the thing is we limit ourselves because we're like, well, I have to make money from my job. This eight to five job is the only way yeah. I can make money. Or yeah. this, this car dealership is the only place I can get this or this store or this person. And you limit yourself so much. And Anya and I had a conversation about that regarding money. Um, when I had coaching with her about how like you, you limit yourself by thinking like I can only earn money through my job yeah. and you have to be open to it coming from any source. And when I was thinking about this saddle with love, I know it sounds so crazy, but no. horse people will get me. <laughs> like I was thinking about this and I was like, I just, man, if I don't get it, it's fine. But if I do, that's great. And I never said it has to come from eBay or it has to come from Facebook. And I've been looking on Facebook, never saw it. And it just, it just happened to work out exactly the way it was supposed to. And I got it completely for free and it was exactly everything I wanted. And I almost cried when I opened the box. Like I just couldn't believe how it had happened. That, that is and such that an amazing story. one out of 30,000? Yeah. There were 30,000 people in the Facebook group. And she, yeah, I know how great. <laughs> this is so great. It's um, so great. 
it, it's like it just gives you that it's evidence that the universe, the universe is everything. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and I told, I don't know if I told you about it, Anya, but I, I think I did. And I told Dan about my record player that yeah, I got. Yeah. So my grandfather, system. yeah, like my grandfather had like this giant console record player and I loved it. And he had these um, records from like the 40s when he was in World War II and um, they're like Hawaiian music even like that he got in Hawaii. And so I love these records. Like I, oh, I treasure them. And I wanted a new record player, but I didn't want to go buy one from like Target or Walmart. I wanted a big stereo. And I had been thinking about it. I looked on Facebook again in the garage sale sites and it was like 200 bucks, $150. And I was like, I'm not gonna no, like, no, I don't want to do that. So I just thought about, Oh, how great it would be if I could just find one for free. I literally walked downstairs a week later out of my apartment and it was downstairs by my door. Nice. Somebody was getting rid of it. <laughs> Just throwing it away and it works perfect. Oh. You just walk outside and you're like, oh, record player, the one I want. Thanks. Thanks, universe. Exactly. I guess that is falling into your lap. I keep telling people that's probably not, it's going to get you close to it. But yeah, no, that Sorry. sounds pretty much like it fell into your, was like, I couldn't get out of my door. I had to get, I had to move this thing. That's well, it was, it was, it was really great. And I, like I texted uh, my, my parents and I was like, mom, dad, get here. I need help carrying it up the stairs. That is incredible. Well, ladies, we're kind of heading towards, I think the end. Is there any final thoughts? Any final plugs that you want to talk about um you can talk you know um really really i mean something that anya you know said and like you've always said is it doesn't ever just because you get your person or you get the money or you get whatever thing it is that you're trying to get to it doesn't end there like the work still has to be done and i think a lot of people get really caught up in well, I did this, so it's over, right? Like, I got my person, it's over, right? And I, and I, you know, my person and I, um, we work on our relationship every day. And there's been things recently that have come up because there was growth I still needed that I needed to step out of my comfort zone and approach him with because it was time. And there's, there's timing for everything. And I think a lot of people want to rush. And if you would have told me, you know, like a year ago, it's going to take you a year, Jacqueline, to get to where you want to be, yeah. I may not have wanted to do it, but because I've been in the process of it, um, it's just been, it's been so much growth that I look back and I'm like, I had to go through every step of it. And so many people are like, well, Jacqueline, I think you could have gotten your person faster had you done this. I think you could have healed yourself if you would have done this. And that's not what this is about. No. It's still not what this is about. And everybody wants a quick fix because we live in a world of instant gratification. Yeah. And I think that there's so much that people don't understand that they don't want to do the work because it's uncomfortable and it's, yeah. and it's unpleasant sometimes. Like you don't want to fix your issues and they don't want to do the work. They want to just, you know, bandaid it with another person. And that's, it just doesn't work that way. So, and even when people approach me, they're like, Jacqueline, how do I do this faster? Is it really going to take that long? How quick can I do this? And I'm like, well, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about self-love. Yeah. <laughs> so we, I go back. I'm like, oh, you're not getting away from that. Like, we're going back to it. Yeah. Um, and I really think people, they just, they want to put a timeline on things. And it just doesn't work that way. And the work, the work is continuous. Well, if I can get a bag of popcorn in three and a half minutes in the microwave, then why should manifesting <laughs> take any longer? Uh, because <laughs> because I'm just wondering how I should well, be able to get them in like four minutes, maybe I'll give you some extra time. Let's put Ridiculous. it this way: you know that that popcorn's gonna pop no matter what when you put it in the microwave. You know it is, and a well, lot of other people. Up. Well, we okay. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I know it's really a good analogy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that was a great but, I mean, really, like yeah. people, you you know that popcorn's gonna pop, so of course it's not a problem. <laughs> but all these people, they have all these doubts and beliefs that are in the way. So yeah, that's why it takes longer. Yeah, exactly. And not you know, to totally go with the analogy even a step further just for the hell of it, uh, you know, in the step that you had like thousands of kernels in there and like most of them popped. That's pretty freaking awesome, right? <laughs> Let's stop looking at the one. This didn't pop. This didn't pop. Yep, you got a bowl full of what did pop. I know. Up, like, like, right? Like we focus on the positive. ones that didn't pop. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on. Focus. See, I can, I can turn yeah. that frown upside down. Watch. You watch, girl. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. You know, I think, 
the no, more I... you do law of attraction, the more you do yes. self love, the more you understand everyone's you pushed out, the more you understand living in the end from Neville, the more you understand that slowing everything down is the way to create. It's not about speed and getting over there. It's about slowing it down and really just getting to the point where you no longer need to get over there. That's the whole thing. You no longer have to get over there. It's here, it's here, it's here. And that whole thing about the Wizard of Oz where they were on their journey and they went to the wizard and then they found out he was a total charlatan. He wasn't even real. No. And that along the journey, they developed courage. They developed, you know, every single one of them, the characters developed certain aspects that they felt that they didn't have and they were trying to get to the wizard to get. It's the same thing with what we're doing. You have to understand that everything is within you. The, the, the love is within you. The success is within you. The love is within you. The saddle, amazing connection with one random person out of 30,000 people is within you. You just have to live from connecting with the end result and you've got to stop defending your damn limitations. Stop defending yes. it. Amen, girl. Hallelujah. It, it doesn't bloody, you're wasting effing time I love defending you. the limitations when you could spend that 30 minutes, that half an hour, that hour, that two hours, that three hours, that half a day living from the end result. And then that time is actually going forth and bringing that thing into you because you projected the right thing and you have then spent time creating rather than reacting. Right. And this is the thing that, you know, like Jacqueline said, the self-love is the most important thing. Remembering everyone as you pushed out is the most important thing. Living from the end is the most important thing. You know what? If you could remember those three things, they're the three legs of the stool that are the most important thing, then you would just balance out and you would stop trying to get because this whole obsession about I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get love, I gotta get money, I gotta get time, I gotta get my saddle, I gotta get this, I gotta get that. All that stuff is a waste of time and you will never get time back. So spend your time mentally wisely by living in the state of what you want and stop trying to get and yeah. I know we've said it a million times, but getting, trying to get, trying to get, trying to get, trying to get is a sickness of the mind. It's Stop a sickness. trying to try. That's Stop really, trying yeah. to try. Stop trying to get. Stop yeah. trying to get it's other It's the trying that actually is you. the problem. It's the fact yes. that I'm trying because I don't have it. I keep noticing yes. I don't have it, so I try. And I try harder because I don't have it still. Yeah. So I try again, and yeah. I still don't have it. I keep noticing I don't have yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you a, know, it's a painful I circle. I hear that a million times a month. I try so hard. Well, there's the problem. You try so hard. You have not understood surrender. You have not understood allowing. You have not understood that it's about giving and then it comes back as a photocopy. The sickness that we have in the Western world and in the world in general is about trying to get. That's the whole damn problem is the getting attitude especially in the western world we're yes, really especially. so geared that way it's unfortunate yeah. everything takes work and if you're not working hard then you're not trying and well, you gotta get I, everything too and i gotta get the exactly. newest thing i gotta I have it's stupid. to have it and you know what that comes from our parents generation it comes from our grandparents generation their bumper sticker is i have to work hard and you know what in this generation it's I have to work smart and you yeah. drop that I have to work hard because that is a waste of damn energy. It so is. And people talking about what they don't want. I hear so many people, they yeah. sit there and they just, all they do is talk about, well, I don't want this to happen or I don't want this to happen. And this was my bad day. And sometimes, yeah, if you vent for a minute and you get it out of your system and you're like, okay, reset button, focus. But they don't just stop after that quick little reset button. They yeah. keep going. And you're like, well, no wonder that your life is starting to suck and it snowballs. Don't talk about the snowball. Don't talk about the bad things over and over. Yeah, this happened, but this is what I'm doing to fix it. And I'm back on track like yeah. you don't live there you can't yeah. live there 
And like I've said like to others before great. too, if you're hanging out yeah. with people and four out of five of your friends are constantly talking about how badly life sucks, I'm betting you're probably somewhat in that circle too. Exactly. So it's good sometimes to look at who's around you and what they're talking about and what they yeah. believe. Yeah. And you know, Abraham, I have a friend that we say, she says, oh, you go, how are you? And she goes, yeah, I'm okay, but this. And I go, okay, you've got 17 seconds. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I can turn it around. Seconds, And then you loop around. I want to hear what you want. I want to hear how you're yeah. focusing on that. I want to hear how you're dropping your obsession with defending your damn limitations because you are wasting time getting to where you need and want to go. If you are doing that, and that is a repetitive, habitual, negative thought pattern, are you willing to let it go? I agree, and I think that's something that scares a lot of people. It's breaking away from what yeah. everyone else does. And I think to a lot of it, there's that group think mentality, right? And we get stuck in those places where everybody else is not believing what you're saying and, it, and they're asking me what's wrong with me and if I'm crazy. And, and it's one of those things where when you actually try it and start to experience it, it answers itself. It's not, uh, you know, it's not snake oil. You actually see r things happen in your life and you can call them coincidence, coincidences. You can call them whatever you want. Okay. But, I want to ask something. What okay. is snake oil? Snake oil is a, a <laughs> phrase. They, it's, so back in the olden days, like pharmacy trucks would go around and they would sell like crazy pharmacy, but it would just be like supposedly like, you know, like oil from a, like, you know, nasty, whatever. And it was just something that was worthless and didn't actually, wasn't actually medicine. Make you so, hallucinate probably. If oh, you yeah. If you had the right kind of snake oil. You know what, Dan? I'm going to yeah. Google what is snake oil. Look it up. Look it up. That is something I can't say I've ever researched. I've never heard snake oil. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, ladies, I think we should probably cut it. We're getting pretty close on the long side, and I wow. think this has been really awesome, and we need to do this again for sure. Yes. Jacqueline, so, Jacqueline, thank you. Thank we'll have you links know. underneath. Hopping okay. in. It is just, look, you and I and Dan, we have a connection. We have... We have Cross paths and it ha and I your saddle story is extremely inspiring to me. I think it is fabulous. It just shows the universe hears everything. And, and there's a, a, a success story you shared with us eons ago, and I'll probably try to dig up that that and link that story from way back when. It was pretty cool when you first kind of made a big transition. So, hey, you've been a part of uh, Agnes and Mai's world for quite a while now, actually. So yeah, cool. I, I have, and I... Um, I oh, my God. I'm just gushing. I couldn't believe I finally got to meet you, Jacqueline. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. It's literally me on the inside, like, all the time. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And I, you know, and I think back like when Dan, I first started watching you, I think you had like 300 followers. Maybe. And, <laughs> and Anya's had like under 3,000 maybe. Oh, and so I'm small then. Like, Little no, but I, I think about that and I'm like, holy cow, they're growing. I love this so much. Yeah. And it's, I've just been, I've always wanted to do this. I didn't know if you guys would ever invite me. <laughs> and wow, so this wow. is kind of like a... Yeah. <laughs> And mm -hmm. forth because Dan said to me, What about Jacqueline? You know her, I know her, and I said, Great idea. <laughs> you manifested us asking you, so well done. Well, I was trying to get a saddle out of the deal, but uh, <laughs> needless to say, that didn't work. I mean, if you're ever in Oklahoma, Dan, like. I, I, we will, we will meet up. We'll say hi. I will try to not like faint. <laughs> well, shoot. we'll, we'll get out there and we'll do something like that. Shoot. Y'all we can do that for sure. Yeah, I reckon so. Uh, it's so, it's so great. You know, and, um, one last thing I, you know, people on vision boards, I noticed this the other day, I started to make a vision board last summer and I find these random journals that I've got, like where I would start writing affirmations down and I kind of read back through it, like where I was. Um, but like everything on my vision board has actually come to pass now. And nice. so it's actually brilliant. Um, my, my apartment, uh, my, my dog, my golden retriever. And then of course, you know, my person and I, like we've worked everything out and we're, 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 we're doing amazing. We're making plans for the future and, um, you know, just all of these things that I put on there. So like what you focus on, even if it's in the back of your mind, it's still, you know, it's still there. And like YouTube yeah. both, like I, I watch your videos you guys got me through like some of the very darkest moments when I wanted to give up and I was struggling. I never doubted my person and I, um, but it was my own beliefs about myself that it was so hard. And so like you two were like my morning, my breakfast, like both of you in the morning, I was like, all right, what new video do they have posted already today? And so, you know, it just, 
it really helped get me through and like the, the focus of that. And, and so doing this, when you invited me, I was just like, this is a dream come true. I've been waiting Beautiful. for this. So if you guys ever want to have me back, uh, I would love to. Well, I'm to very happy we were able continued. to do this. Yes. Yes. To be continued for sure. Yes. Well, from three wonderful certified organic nuts. <laughs> I yeah. think we've uh, done a great job. Covered some really cool stuff. So thank you yeah, all. Yeah, what a this. great. Thank you. You know, this yeah. to me is it. It's that connection. It's that yeah. learning. It's that exchanging of ideas. And it's that really just being on par with knowledge and really sharing it so people can take it forward and extend it out it's pay it forward it's a real yeah, pay it forward it really is you're right this is good and there's kind of an energy that lives on even afterwards which is pretty yeah. cool by the way i think now's maybe a good time to tease it i know we're maybe a little ways <laughs> off but i can foresee and we've talked about this maybe doing either a a live group one with you and i where we could actually take other people but two yeah. maybe doing a live or a recorded multi-person session yeah. Uh, so we've we've talked about a few things, and I think uh, something like that is certainly bound to happen, much like this video here. So it it'd be is. fun to do some live stuff too together. Now, something popped into my random head as we've just been talking <laughs> about this. Before we sign off, Neville talked about the ladder exercise, oh. where you talk about, I'm not going to climb a ladder, I'm not going to climb a ladder, I'm not going to climb a ladder. Now, I'm going to post that link down below because for people that don't know what that means, it will explain it. But Neville basically said, I want you to, for a week, put post-it notes around your flat and say, I'm not going to climb a ladder, I'm not going to climb a ladder, I'm not going to climb a ladder. Those of you that actually do climb a ladder within a certain time frame which was I think about a week if I remember it correctly please meet me in this particular location and we will talk about what happened now in that exercise many people kept affirming I don't climb a ladder I don't climb a ladder I don't climb a ladder and they sent Neville stories of where they did climb a ladder now if we understand the whole premise of the universe is a focus-based universe so what you actually state whether you say not or not you don't use the word not it's the focus on the latter yeah. that creates the experience yeah. so the latter thing was fine but what about if you said i actually manifest the most amazing relationship i've had, ever had the most amazing job i've ever had the most amazing amount of money i've ever had and you replace the ladder with something that's actually very significant because the ladder was actually very irrelevant. It was just used, used as an example. So why I'm bringing this up is because the focus is the most important thing. Let go of defending your limitations. He doesn't love me. I don't have enough money. Why is it that I've got this health condition? I'm not living where I want to live. I'm not free let it go yeah. literally make a decision where you go you know what that time where i'm focusing on that stuff is wasted let it go focus on what you want and go for it and the latter is only a very one percent of what you could imagine it could be the most amazing relationship you've ever had it could be the most incredible amount of freedom you've ever had it could be the most satisfying life you've ever had focus it on what you really want use your mind to help you to create and stop wasting all this time with all this rubbish that is useless because you never get that time back you never ever get that time back you're right your time is your most valuable commodity of all. It's not the money, it's not the men, it's not the women, it's not the relationship, it's not the job, it's the time. The time is the most important thing. Use it wisely because you're gonna drop dead at some point and you will never get this back. Use it to the best of your ability by having pinpointed focus on what you want and go for it and stop the damn waste of time.
that's what I want to say today because I see this again and again and again and again as my coaching via YouTube comments over and over and over this wastage of time. Use that time with what you want because that is something that is of value to you. Do it because it is the best thing you can do if you really want to support want to su yourself and getting to where you want to be. And like it doesn't matter said. how old you are. It doesn't matter what sex you are. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what culture you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter where you, you damn well live. Use that time and focus because the focus and the concentration is the most important thing of all. Like Goddard says, right? If, if we understood how powerful our thoughts or our focus was, we'd be constantly pruning our thoughts because pruning there's a lot of times. Of revision. Yes, yes. Dan. And that I love pruning. continued for our yes, next. Absolutely. The next show. <laughs> well, ladies, this has been fun and we will do this again for sure. I just wanted to thank you once again and thank you all for joining us on this wonderful adventure. Uh, it's been a good show. I think we covered a lot of good topics. Thanks, this ladies. was awesome. And Jacqueline, thank you for joining us because it brought thank you guys. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. So yeah, thank you for coming in and being – look, I personally am really inspired by your saddle story. I think that is awesome. It is amazing. <laughs> it is just the evidence of what conscious creation can be. Can be. Oh, thank you. Story. I know it's so, it's so simple and people would be like, well, you know, it's not a house or a car, but – it's so amazing how fast it happened and I'm getting to where I can manifest things with in about a week's time or less yeah. and I, a week to three to five days somewhere in there I'm able to bring things into my reality and so it's getting more and more fun for yeah. me to see what is coming um, and it's stuff that I never expected and I and I noticed that it is always the things that I think about with pure joy or pure love or pure just happiness no no reservations and here it comes because when we're, you know, when I don't stress over it, I'm just like, it'd be great if I had it. Okay. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There, there it go. is. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. What an Thanks, awesome guys. Uh, bloody interview. It. I just have to say that was awesome. I agree. <laughs> Dan, do you want to sign us out? Cool. Oh, I, yeah, I just closed mine. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> I thought we were done. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And, again, uh, Jacqueline, it was awesome. We'll have links below for all the great stuff and always the infamous and always enjoyed and appreciated Agnes Vivarelli and more links below for her channel as well. So thank you, ladies, for joining me on this wonderful discussion. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So you two stay on. I'm going to yeah. stop the recording.